David, were you surprised when you received the call about this project? Yes, well, I was pleasantly surprised. I had been thinking about it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a history buff. Okay. And I knew that this anniversary was fast approaching yeah. for 2010. And I'd actually begun uh, to resource some photographs of P.T. Barnum in the hopes of maybe just doing a portrait bust of him or perhaps a bar relief or something. Uh, and right about that time, Pat called me. Hmm. And uh, we got right to work. So what about the research end of it? Do you start doing things like that? Well, fortunately, uh, P.T. Barnum at the time of where we're depicting the statue was when he was, which was basically when he was in his 60s, hmm. mid 60s, it was probably one of the most famous people in the world. So there's a great deal of photograph, photographs of him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to access a lot of that either on the internet or through books. Mm -hmm. So I've got a, a large photo montage right now of P.T. Barnum in my studio from just about, I think, every picture that's ever been taken of him at this point. And I've, I've studied those photographs and we're using that as reference. I've also uh, found period costume from that time. Mm -hmm. I'm using that period costume to get the pants right and the coats right and things. And I've had some uh, fantastic models with a, a very similar P.T. Barnum build come to the studio and actually start modeling for me as well. And one happens to be uh, Tom Barnum, who lives across the street from me, oh. very fortuitously. And uh, he's, a, he's a woodworker, and he's got a build like P.T. Barnum, and he's a third-generation Barnum. So, so we're using a bit of his physique and some of his the features. The genealogy as, continues. Then, yes, it in, does. In, in statuary, yes, it does. right? <laughs> and uh, my dad has also been kind enough to come over a mile, too, because oh. he's, he's more in that, that, that age range that I'm looking for and also has a similar build. Yeah. Okay, you know, I've got a question right here. It says, now that the model has been chosen, how do you, uh, how do you plan to proceed making this forward into a reality? I, I think you've got some, uh, like sort of a picture here that we want to. Yeah, I do. Uh, we have I have, a, I have a photographs here. I don't think the camera can zoom in quite close enough. Well, but these were the three models of the different proposals that we placed in the library over okay. the summer. And the townspeople of Bethel voted on which one they can liked best. Can we get a uh, camera on that? I think that would be very interesting for the people, our viewers, to see. There we go. Oh, perfect. And uh, so these are the three poses that we had on display in the library. And this was the pose that was ultimately chosen. Mm -hmm. And I don't recall exactly how the balloting panned well, out as uh, far as. The bulk of the balloting actually went to uh, this particular statue. We had over 300 people um, cast their votes. And we actually placed the maquettes in a case in the library so they could actually get up close and personal and take a look at them. And <coughs> over overwhelmingly, this was the one the public chose. And again, uh, this is just basically a sketch, as you call them. Mm -hmm. a sketch. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And so it's really rough, but it gave us an idea of what we were going to go with. These these small figures are approximately 18 inches high. Mm -hmm. Why don't you and show this next one models. right here? I, I guess this is the final, uh, or just the, the version? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the next step in the process, <coughs> uh, we, we, we've chosen this to move forward with, and the next step is to produce a one-third size of the okay. finished model. So everything is being stepped. I've gone, I've gone from 18 inches here, now I'm going to a little bit larger than 24, maybe 26 inches. And this is, uh, this is in prog uh, process right now. You can actually see sculpture tools laid out on the sculpting table and uh, the clay's roughed out. I'm beginning to build him out a little bit larger. Uh, He's a big man. And uh, we haven't quite, you know, done the shoes yet or the hand, but it's beginning to take a, you're beginning to get a, a the effect go. of what the finished piece will look right. like. There's probably about another month or a month and a half of sculpting to what do. What size is this again now, David? It's about 26, 26 inches. 26 inches, sorry. And there's about another month and a half worth of sculpting to be done here. Uh, and I'm going to try to get as much detail as I can. And then you go for what's, what's the next size then up? Then the next size will be life size. Life size. So what we would like to do with this piece is uh, get it as close to the finished design as possible. Let me ask you this, and this is where, where I don't understand things, and probably most of our viewers are. Why do you go from, you know, you had the 18 inch, and you go to a 26, and why, did, why, why not go from 18 to 6 foot? What am I missing? Well, the advantage of going to a one-third, first of all, the, the, the sketches were very rough. Okay. And uh, 
weren't anatomically correct. Okay. You know, these are these are sketches where if I really felt like it, I would just take an arm and just sort of twist it. This is just clay over an aluminum wire armature, okay. so it can be easily bent and moved. So I didn't feel the proportions aren't a hundred percent here. The anatomy is a hundred percent at all. So these can be pushed aside. Uh, and the next step is to go to a size where it's still manageable, but yet I can get I can get all the anatomy into it, all the drapery correct, the buttons correct, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that when I go to the life-size piece, it can be enlarged using uh, a, a three-dimensional pantograph, which I have in my studio. Okay. And the advantage of that is uh, I can build an armature up using the pantograph, taking measurements off this one-third size. They can then be transferred to the metal frame, which has to be welded in place. So I'll know exactly how this arm goes. So when I'm welding pipe here, it'll be very accurate, and the pipe will be exactly in the middle of the sleeve. And the same thing goes for all the internal supports that will have to be uh, used for the legs. Then, then from when you finally have the final version, then what do you do from that point? Well, let me back up a little bit. Be okay. Because part of the reason for enlarging and being very accurate in the enlarging from the maquette is that if I'll be putting probably 300 pounds of clay on this piece. So it's very difficult to move that amount of clay if right. I want to make a change. Right. So getting everything very right at this size is very important because once welded pipes are placed in here and uh, that much clay is put onto the piece, it's very difficult to make changes. So I like to get it as close as possible in this size first. Right. The next step, uh, the, the, the next step in the uh, sculpting process, once that armature is built up and the clay is put on it, will actually probably take me about five or six months to actually sculpt in the degree of detail uh, the piece would need to, to, to really have character life size. And, uh, and uh, that, that is, uh, that, that's quite an undertaking in that uh, we really have to uh, push for accuracy in the hat, we really have to push for accuracy in the hair, in the buttons of that period, right. in the shoes of that period, uh, the sewing of the necktie, I'll probably, I, I actually have a friend who's uh, making up the, the necktie based on old historical patterns. We really want to get the details very historically correct. So the life-size piece is probably about six months of sculpting, easily. Really? That, that, uh, well.